some of the misconceptions of Jurassic 5 that people might say is um, that we're alternative. Because it kind of leads you to believe like alternative to what? Like if we're based off of the root of what hip hop was, you know, from, the, from its inception, then it can't really be an alternative. It's like directly in the middle of the bullseye, you know? I think being um, hard and being street has really gotten people's vision a little bit blurry. I think that's cool. I think there's, that should always be in um, the whole scope of, of hip hop. That's why I hate when people say, what do you think about um, you know, Dre as opposed to Jurassic 5? Or you know, they'll try to do the yin and the yang with Jurassic 5, and I love it all. I think it should all be one. I don't think there should be an underground type of hip hop and a hyphy and, a, and, a, and I think it should just be hip hop. Because when you spread yourself thin, it becomes weak. Going back to the misconceptions, I feel like, you know, we are hip hop, you know. We can be gone for four years and sell out shows and rock a crowd, no problem. It's just getting the listeners that listen to, you know, say maybe David Banner to listen to J5 and vice versa. So that's the whole thing, you know. Um, I think that's the biggest misconception. That's the that's, that's probably the most frustrating one for me. Um, I don't think it has been a, there has been enough on myself. I think maybe the only misconception misconception about myself would be that I only work with J Five and that um, I only do one style of beat. But anybody who's seen like my show knows that you know I'll have like a whole stage filled with kids' toys and just crazy shit, and I'll play all kinds of records: soul, hip hop, funk, Brazilian. I think what people don't know about me is I'm extremely versatile. And I enjoy all types of music. I mean, I really enjoy like gangsta shit as much as I do underground stuff, or you know, 70s soul as much as I do you know, 60s soul, or you know, Brazilian shit or jazz shit. You know, I'm, I'm, I love a lot of types of music. Well, the toys came about for me um, looking at the turntable and saying I want to do something different with the turntable because everybody's like super great at scratching now. Like kids that are 14, 15 can kill the turntable now on some cuts, you know, and, and it's just like, okay, and I kind of got tired of that, kind of got tired of listening and scratching and even seeing DJ Tricks. So it started out with me um, looking at the turntable and saying, this can do something different than, than scratching. And, I, and so I, um, I wrapped, I, the first thing I did was I wrapped a rubber band around the handle of the needle and I turned all the bass up on that channel and I started playing it like an upright bass with a pick. I pulling, by pulling the rubber band, I was pulling it and just letting it go deeper. And so. That was the beginning of me looking at being a DJ in a different light. I wanted to look at it as a musician instead of just a, a conventional DJ. And then I started doing things like putting the dust lid on, tapping it, using it as an 808. That evolved into like, well, let me just use things that are not turntables. Let me just, just move out of it completely and see what I can do. And that's how kids, you know, the kids' toys came about. And there's a toy called Music Blocks that won the best toy in 1999. And then kids didn't really buy it. I think they might have even went out of business or stopped selling them, so I bought 10 of them. Um, it's basically they're cubes and there's a bar of music on each side of each cube. And I've been doing my routines on that. They're, they're more fun than turntables for me right now. I've seen some strange shit. I, I mean, on tour, I've seen a lot of strange shit. I, this one incident I didn't really see, but one of our crew guys saw, there was a girl that tried to hitch a ride in our bay underneath our bus. It was snowing out in Minneapolis. We were leaving from Minneapolis to Chicago or someplace, and she tried to sneak in our bay. And I'm glad they found her because she would have totally died underneath there. It was like freezing out. I guess she wanted to hitch a ride. So that's the wildest thing I, I think you know has happened. But there's been all kinds of stuff. You know, you know, you go to cities that you wouldn't expect to be really hype, or cities that you would expect to be hype, and they're so dead. Or you know, this is always something like. It's unpredictable being on the road. Like we just went to Saskatoon, Canada, and it was like the, one of the liveest shows we've ever played in our life. And I'm like, I didn't even know there was a place called Saskatoon. Like, what the hell is that? So you never know what's going to happen on the road, and that's the beauty of it.